Welcome back to the Art Room. Mrs. Larby here. This week we're talking about line. We're going through the elements of art and the first one is line. All the many things we can do with line. With line, one of the favorite artists I like to think about is Vincent van Gogh. He painted Starry Night. This might look familiar to a lot of, of people. It's a rather famous piece of work of art. There's been a lot of different things done with this over the years. You can see it on t-shirts and on posters. Uh, Mr. Van Gogh was kind of a master of using line in his artwork. You can see all these little dashed brush strokes that he used, but one of the things that stands out the most to me in this artwork is that you have the tangible parts of a landscape. And by the way, landscapes are um, a piece of artwork or a, a picture that has to do with what you see in the land, nature. There's no people involved. There's also cityscapes, which has to do more with being in the city. Landscapes, you'll see the hills and the trees and those kind of things that you would find out in nature. So in this landscape painting, we see um, the tree in the front, we see the starry night, we see the hills, and we see a town in the distance. But we also see the swirling line, something that we might not be able to see in real life, but we can sense in real life, which is the wind. We could feel the wind. It's such a beautiful part of Starry Night to see the wind going through this picture so that we can almost feel it. And Mr. Van Gogh used this repetition of line and pattern to make this happen. So today we're going to be creating our own line landscape. You're going to have a choice. You can do something in the uh, kind of genre of the Starry Night, or you could do a sunrise or a sunset or daytime sunshine. Here's how we're gonna start. You'll need one sheet of paper and a black, I'm gonna use a Sharpie, a black marker would work just fine too. If you're using a Sharpie, make sure you have something underneath there so that the Sharpie doesn't bleed through on the table you're working on. All right, here's how we're gonna begin. A lot of times in artwork, we, can, we have a tendency to wanna to start in the middle of our paper, but really starting above or below is gonna be ideal, a little more interesting. So here we are, let's find the center, and you decide, are you gonna go above the center line or below the center line. I think I'm gonna go just below my center line. And the first thing I'm gonna do is create a wavy line. This is gonna be for the hills. We're in California and we have these beautiful hills um, in our scenery, in our landscapes. So you can decide how many hills you're gonna see. My paper's a little smaller than yours might be. Um, 12 by 18 is a great size to use for this. For demonstrations, I'm gonna be using something a little smaller. All right, you've got one wavy line. I'm gonna add another wavy line here. And then I'm gonna connect them with another wavy line. So now we can start to see our hills forming. All right, with this, we're going to bold these lines. We're gonna add emphasis. This is actually a principle of art. We're gonna emphasize these main hills, these main lines. This will come into play in just a moment. All right, so we have our lines emphasized. We're gonna go in now and we're gonna use a thinner, not so bold line to create these hills. I like to just follow the same line that I have. You have a choice of putting your lines close together or further apart. Here's what further apart would look like. I want you to think for a moment um, if this looks relaxing to you or if it looks like it has more energy. Over here, I'm gonna put the lines closer together and you'll see I'm only using lines and thin lines at that, but just the change in how closely I put them together or how far apart I space them will make a difference in the feeling of my artwork. We discuss in class sometimes um, which one feels more relaxing, lines further apart, lines closer together. And most of the time we would say lines further apart feel a little more relaxing, like we have a little more space. These lines closer together create more movement, a little more energy. You choose, you can do your whole picture. You could have some far apart, some close together. You could do your whole picture one way or the other. It's your choice. I'm gonna add these down to the bottom here now. All right, so now if we're up to the sky. In the sky, you have a choice of making it daytime or nighttime. I'm just gonna talk you through this a little, okay? So nighttime sky, I like to include the wind because I just think that's so neat. So it's just this swoosh line right here. And there's another one in his artwork, so I put two in mine as well. 
I like to emphasize these lines. So the more lines you put out from it, the stronger it's gonna look like the wind's blowing. The fewer lines that you add, the more weaker or the more of a breeze it's gonna feel like. So I added some straight line or some thin lines and some bold lines, but I also added some dashed and dotted lines just to change things up a little. You know, these dashed and dotted kind of give the feeling of a lighter wind more than the bold lines, right? So think again, how do you want your wind to look? How do you want the viewer to observe your artwork? I added little circle stars in the background. I have seen students add stars that look a little bit more like a diamond, which is kind of cool. Some shape like this. Some people like to do both kind of shapes. You could change it up. Decide where you want your stars and scatter them around. And then if you notice, Van Gogh actually does have a moon up in the corner of his artwork. Sometimes uh, it's not as noticeable. I like how it's just kind of quietly sitting up there. All right, one thing that I want to point out with this is after you get your first line, so I would recommend do your bold lines first, do this line, do this line, add the little circles of your stars, add a moon if you would like, and then take a look and see, do you kind of like the composition, the way you have things, and then start building your lines from there. Start adding these extra lines around. One thing in artwork that we talked about in class together as well is that sometimes we're tempted to put our things really far apart and then leave them like that. So they're just kind of sitting out in space by themselves. But I wanna show you how different it looks if we start to let them bump into each other. So I'm just gonna go around these shapes, like my twinkling stars. I always like to bold my original lines. That's just gonna make it stand out. You can see that that's the first part. I might add dashed lines here. Little polka dotted lines would look great for this too. It would look like a delicately twinkling star. All right, so it's, the more lines we put, the more it looks like it's glowing, right? Then I could come over to this one after I bold it in, and I'm gonna start adding these other lines around just to show that that light is really going. But I'm gonna go until these two stars lights, these little extra lines bump into each other. So instead of leaving all this space blank, what would happen if they bump into each other? Okay, we can see that they're starting to overlap and that's gonna start making it look like it's one picture. I would continue to add, I'd probably add some that are a little closer together. Those were kind of far apart. And just observe how instead of it looking like this kind of scattered picture, it's actually gonna start to look like it's all a part of the same sky. And this is just because these shapes in our picture are touching. So now when the viewer looks at the picture, they're gonna look over here and automatically be drawn up here and automatically be drawn down here. And it's okay to let them overlap, let one look like it's twinkling behind the other. Let me show you, it works um, maybe a little more clearly in the circles. See how these just started to bump into each other and I let this one go around behind it. So now we have this picture where things are touching, but also, there's white space. You don't have to fill everything in. In fact, our eyes need a little bit of rest, especially when there's so much energy going on down here in the bottom of the picture. Our eyes need little spots to rest. So as you're doing your artwork, I want you to check. Did I bold some lines and emphasize them? Did I bold some lines in my sky to emphasize them? Are the elements in my sky touching in some way? Maybe not all. This one's up here by itself, but it's close enough so that it looks like it's all one picture. Here's what it could look like if you do a daytime sky. So this is a sky during the day. I added a circle here, and then I kept adding my rings out. I let my rings get further apart as they get further away. This kind of gives the idea of the sunlight's fading as it gets further away. It's not as intense right here. It's not as intense that it is right here. So this is my intense spot where most of my stuff's going on. But as I get further away from the center of my sun, we're gonna see that we have a little more white space. I just made up some patterns for this, but you can make up patterns as well. I thought this kind of gave me the idea of these sun rays and you know the sun, all the gases inside the sun just kind of moving around in there. Uh, use the little dashed and dots lines. Use thick lines and thin lines again as well. I bolded my main lines so that I have some emphasis. That also, just like the white space, helps our eye to rest at certain spots. Those are all little keys that help things come together to look like a finished piece of artwork. 
All right, I threw a lot at you in this one lesson. Remember, you only have to do one or the other. So you could do a nighttime sky or you could do a daytime sky. You could have your sun down here like it's rising or setting off the top of the mountain. You can put different patterns in here, whatever you think would look like a sunshine to you. There's no wrong way to do this. I can't wait to see what you come up with next. If you have any questions, you can always email me and I'll see you next time here in the art room.